Hello, welcome to my um, help videos for AQA A-level chemistry. Um, hopefully you've used some of the other videos as well. If there's any videos missing that you'd like, please let me know. Um, this one focuses on spec point 3.3.1, which is the very first organic topic in AS. So it's introduction to organic chemistry. Now, just something to start with. So organic chemistry, you'll, you'll have studied a little bit of GCSE and it mainly contains carbon and some other um, elements in there as well. So carbon is a, a non-metallic element, it's in group four, and it will form covalent bonds with other non-metal elements such as hydrogen, nitrogen, um, and the halogens, okay? What I'm gonna suggest you do is pause the video and just have a quick look through this list and you're gonna try and predict how many covalent bonds you think each of the following atoms um, will form. So pause the video and then we'll run through each one in turn. Okay, well, carbon, it is in group four. Okay, it has four outer electrons in the outer shell. It has the ability to form and it will form four covalent bonds. Hydrogen only has one outer electron and it will form one covalent bond. Oxygen is in group six. Has six outer electrons and oxygen will form two covalent bonds. Nitrogen is in group five, it will form three covalent bonds. Halogens, so chloride, bromide, etc., they're in group seven, they will form one bond. Okay, so when you see these elements bonded in organic chemistry, you will always see four bonds for carbon, whether it's four single bonds or a double bond and two single bonds, etc., you'll always see four bonds. Hydrogen will always only ever have one single bond, as will halogens, they'll only ever have one single bond. Oxygen can either have two single bonds or a double bond. Nitrogen, again, you'll see nitrogen as having a double bond, a single bond, possibly in some cases a triple bond or three single bonds. But that's the, the number of bonds you will see in each of those cases. Right, always good to look at the spec. So if you see my other videos, you'll see that we always refer to the spec as we work through. Now, People do often find this, this topic difficult, the 3.3.1 intro to organic, because it feels like there's an awful lot of new information all at once, and that's true. So a lot of this, we pick up these skills along the way. So I am gonna focus a fair bit um, in this video on the different types of how we can represent organic compounds, okay? So there's lots of different types of formula, and there's six there. Some you've already come across, but maybe you don't know what those words are. We will definitely define homologous series, we're not going to look through all the functional groups in this topic. There's no point in working through all the functional groups because we do that topic by topic, okay? So for example, the next topic is alkane. So I don't really want to spend an awful lot of time talking about alkanes here. We'll leave that for, for each topic, okay? And likewise, as we move through AS and A2, you'll see the, the relevant videos there for the, the topics on those. But we're definitely going to focus on this. We'll do a little bit of naming but we'll leave nomenclature um, for the start of each topic. So each time I do a new topic, you will, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about naming those. So for example, we won't name alcohols today. At the beginning of the alcohols video, we'll look at some naming there. So these are the six types of formula that we need to be able to use and recognize. Now you probably know more of these than you think maybe you do, because those top two were discussed earlier on in AS when we looked at um, molecular formula and we defined it early on being the number and type of each atom present in a molecule and then we looked at empirical formula being the simplest whole number ratio of each atom present in a molecule. General formula, now you do see a little bit of general formula at GCSE, I'll remind you of what a general formula is, so the general formula for an alkene for example was CNH2N. And the general formula for an alkane, we see NH2N plus 2. So there's a general formula. These three here, you will have seen displayed formula before, but you've probably not kind of called it the displayed formula. So, for example, a displayed formula for methane would be C. H4, and we actually draw the sticks and we draw the bonds. So these sticks represent covalent bonds. So we've got one carbon atom with four hydrogens and the carbon is covalently bonded through four single covalent bonds to four hydrogens. A 
I draw something a little bit more complex here. So this is ethanol. You may recognize ethanol from GCSE. We've got a CH3, a CH2, and an OH at the end. This is again displayed formula. So a displayed formula, we actually draw out all of those bonds in that molecule. We draw all the atoms, and it gives us an idea of the, the bonds and the structure of that molecule. Now a structural formula is kind of, it, it's somewhere between your molecular formula and your general formula. So if I were to do a molecular formula for the first one, methane is just CH4. If I do a molecular formula for the second one, for ethanol, it's C2, H6, O. So I'm just counting the numbers and types and telling you what they are. So that doesn't give you much information about the structure when you see C2, H6O. So the structural formula is a bit of a more detailed picture. So the structural formula is CH3, that represents the CH3, then CH2, that represents this, and then OH. So the structural formula, we don't draw any bonds in it, but you can see it gives us an idea of the structure. We can see we've got a CH3, then a CH2, then an OH. Okay, it's much quicker and simpler to draw than it is to draw all of the bonds in your displayed. So that's kind of quite common actually to be asked for structural formula and get used to recognizing them and using them in books uh, and in your notes. Now skeletal is a whole new ball game, okay? And I don't really want to spend a massive amount of time looking at skeletal. I am going to get you to do some practice um, in a later slide or two. But skeletal formula is, again, it shows the structure, but this time, so if I were to draw the skeletal formula for ethanol, you literally draw a line. That line represents a C, a carbon at the end of each. So if we kind of, it helps if we kind of draw dots. We don't need to draw these dots. In fact, we don't draw the dots, but they help us to start with. So that's a carbon at the beginning, and you've got a carbon there. You don't draw any H's whatsoever that are bonded to carbon. So this is three hydrogens here. There's two hydrogens here. We don't draw them on. We just literally draw a line, and then I'm going to draw O H. So this is showing that I've got an OH bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to another carbon. And you would be expected to recognize that this is a H and a H. But we don't draw those on. And again, this would be a H, a H, and another H. And these are carbons here. Okay. But when we do skeletal, we completely ignore the C's and the H's. So skeletal, we don't draw C's and H's on. We draw a series of sticks to represent the bonds between carbons, and then I've drawn an OH. So skeletal is something that we need to practice, really. It's quite difficult to pick up without practicing. So we'll do some practice later on. Okay, so I said as part of this, we we're going to define a homologous series, and it is literally just, just knowing what the definition is. So a homologous series, they have the same general formula, they show a, a, a gradation in physical properties. They have similar chemical properties. They have the same functional group. Functional group is something that you'll become more and more common with as you progress through organic chemistry. And they differ by successive members um, within their homologous series by a CH2 group. So for example, an alkane, alkanes are classed as homologous series because they have the same general formula. They show a gradation in physical properties such as like a trend in their melting points. They definitely have similar chemical properties, so they'll react with similar things in similar ways. They have the same functional group, and they only differ from successive members by a CH2 group. You could say that alcohols are homologous series as well, as are alkenes, they're homologous series. Okay. Right. We've got three homologous series that I've mentioned there, alkanes, alkenes, and alcohols. We're not going to talk about any other groups at this moment in time. I'm picking these groups because I know it's three groups that you'll be familiar with already from GCSE, and it's the first kind of three groups that we'll come across. So you've got four examples of alkanes, you've got three examples of alkenes, and you've got four examples of alcohols. What I want you to do is to draw out the structures for every single one of them, so try and draw the structure out, the displayed formula 
So draw the dis displayed formula, draw the structural formula, and the skeletal formula. Okay. So for each of the 11, do the displayed formula, the structural formula, and the skeletal formula. So pause the video now and have a go at those. Right. I'm not going to go through all 11, okay? I'm just going to pick 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to go through, okay? So I'm going to start with ethane. The displayed formula for ethane is carbon bonded to carbon. You can see it's quite time consuming drawing displayed formula, which is why we don't really draw it that often although it is the one that students feel most comfortable with generally, but you must practice between the two. So that's the displayed formula for C2H6. The structural formula would be CH3, CH3. That would be my structural formula for ethane. And the skeletal formula will literally just be one line. Okay, one line. Okay, butane. So C4, 1, 2, 3, 4. No, that's not 4, that's 3. That's 4. And I'll draw all of the bonds, all of the atoms, very time consuming, which is why we don't use it. But we'll get there. There we go. So there's the displayed formula. The structural formula, CH3, C, H2, C, H2, C, H3. I can actually simplify that a bit. I can call it a C, H3, and then I can say C, H2, 2, C, H3. Okay, both would be accepted. But you can see what I've done there. I've simplified it. Instead of having to go C, H2, C, H2, I can put C, H2, 2. That's going to be really helpful for particularly long chains. Okay, so in a particularly long chain, say there was five or six carbons in a row, CH2s in a row, I could put CH2, 6, for example. And the skeletal, carbon, 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 carbon. There we go. That's now one, two, three, four carbons long. CH3 either end with two CH2s in the middle. That's the skeletal. Much, much quicker and easier to draw skeletal, which is why that tends to be the preferred one moving forward. Right, okay then. So let's have a look at propene. Just make a bit of space. Propene. Change colour for the propene. So propene, carbon, carbon, but there's a double bond between two of the carbons. I've got to draw all of the bonds out to draw that double bond. I've drawn two lines, that's representing my double bond. There will be a full topic later on alkenes. So that's the displayed formula. The structural formula, CH3, CH, CH2. It's quite common to see sometimes in a structural formula that you'll actually draw the double bond just to kind of point out that there's a double bond there. Okay? So you'll sometimes see a double bond drawn out in the structural formula as well. And the skeletal formula, we've got carbon, carbon double bonded at one end single bond carbon and that's it we don't draw any of those H's on so that's our skeletal for propane i'll speed up with butene one two three four now we don't know actually butene because we've got a choice now the double bond could be at the beginning or the double bond could be in the middle so we would actually need some more information as to where this double bond is i'm just going to leave it there this would then be hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. There's only one hydrogen on this carbon because this carbon's got the double bond. So it can only have four bonds. You see the four bonds are there accounted for. Likewise on this carbon, it can only have four bonds. So it's only got one hydrogen. And then we've got these three hydrogens at the end. Again, structural formula, CH3, CH, CH, CH3 and skeletal much quicker I can draw it like that 
Okay. Finally then, I'll do propanol up the top. Make some space, there we go. So propanol, and we'll pick green for propanol. One, two, three. Draw my bonds on. And again, actually, I've got a choice. I could put the OH at the end, or I could put it on the middle. I've chosen to put it on the end. Now, again, on the alcohol topic, you can actually name the alcohol to tell us where the OH group is, but we'll save that for the alcohol topic. So there we go. That's the displayed. Structural, CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, and skeletal. It's like that. One, two, three carbons with an OH group. So we've just done these, okay? We've had a look at that somewhere between the two, okay? And we've had a go at skeletal as well. So you may not be 100% confident right now, but remember, this is just the introduction. You will get com more comfortable as you move on through the topics because you'll practice these as we go, okay? And if you follow my videos, you'll, you'll see that I'm ensuring that you, you do for each topic that we make a point of switching up between structural, displayed, and skeletal. And moving on from A-level, you will find that skeletal is pretty much the one that you're going to use all of the time. And particularly in your second year exams, it's quite common for them to specify the type. And quite often they'll want a skeletal formula. Okay, So you've got to be comfortable with all of them. Don't just pick your favourite one. You've got to be good with all of them. So moving on with the spec then. So this next section introduces the idea of reaction mechanisms. Now, a mechanism is showing you what's taking place during the chemical reaction. So it's not as simple as reactants make products. There's like a series of steps that, that take place. And we, we're going to look at two different types of mechanisms during this spec. We're going to look at some free radical mechanisms. We're also going to look at some curly arrow mechanisms. Now, free radical mechanisms, we look at two, and they'll be discussed in detail when they come up in the later spec point. So we will look at one in the next spec point for alkanes. We'll look at the free radical substitution there of alkanes with um, chlorine. And let's just look at terminology for, for the case of um, this spec point. So we've got a free radical, an unpaired electron, is an inner radical is represented by a dot. Now that basically is telling us that a free radical is represented by a dot. So that there is a chlorine free radical. I can draw the dot on either side and that show me Cl dot or dot Cl. That's a chlorine free radical. That's showing you a chlorine atom with an unpaired electron. And when we do the mechanisms for the free radical mechanism, we don't use curly arrows, we literally use a series of balanced chemical equations. And we'll have different steps. And we actually name those steps, initiation, propagation, and termination steps. And they'll be discussed in detail when we do that in the alkane spec point. And for other types of mechanisms, so we've got the second type of mechanism, we use curly arrows. So we, we literally will use curly arrows to show the movement of electrons during the reaction. So, for example, we could have something with a lone pair, and we'll show that lone pair moving towards something, could be a carbon. And what's happening is that arrow is representing the movement of this pair of electrons towards that carbon, and what will be happening is that is forming a new covalent bond. So if we show the curly arrow moving from a pair of electrons to an atom, what we've just shown is a new covalent bond form there between a carbon and the nitrogen. So the nitrogen has donated its lone pair into the covalent bond. So that bond, those two electrons in that bond came from that lone pair. So that's what the movement of electrons will look like. We can also show curly arrows showing the movement in a bond. So here I've got a double bond here. I've got a carbon oxygen double bond. There'll be two further bonds on this carbon because carbon always has four bonds. Oxygen will only have two. And we can also show the curly arrow to go from a bond 
to the atom. That's showing that that bond is breaking. So that will result in one of the bonds being broken, so it's now only a single bond. And those electrons in that covalent bond have now moved to the oxygen. So that oxygen now has a lone pair because this pair of electrons in that covalent bond have now moved to the oxygen. So this oxygen becomes negatively charged. So this is just showing you that curly arrows represent the movement of electrons. And there's two scenarios we've got there. So we've got the lone pair moving to an atom to form a bond, such as what we had here, or we've got the electrons within a bond moving to the atom, showing a bond being broken. So we're either showing bonds being broken or bonds being formed by using curly arrows. OK. Next spec point is isomerism. And we're asked here to look at two types of isomerism. OK, so this is this is mainly introducing the term isomerism and looking at um, the different types of isomerism. So I'm going to completely ignore for this point, actually, the stereoisomerism, because it's quite difficult to explain when you haven't got the knowledge of carbon carbon double bonds and we haven't got the knowledge of alkenes, particularly when it comes to um, assigning these priority rules. OK, so it is quite tricky and we'll spend um, a substantial amount of time in the alkenes topic talking through stereoisomerism in alkenes. So I'm not even going to talk about those at this point. OK, so I'm going to take off this stereoisomerism part and we're just going to focus on structural isomers. OK, so the definition for a structural isomer is the same molecular formula, in other words, that they have the same number and types of atoms, so the same molecular formula, but with a different structural formula. So the same molecular formula, different structural formula. And there are different types. So we've got to define the term structural formula. We've done that. Draw structures of chain, position and functional. OK, well, these are the three types of structural formulas. So if you if you have structural formulas, it's either chain, position or functional group. And again, it does get quite tricky when you don't know your different functional groups to kind of truly understand this. So as we feed through the spec, as we go through, you will eventually learn that, for example, aldehydes and ketones are functional group isomers of each other. Now, that means nothing right now unless you've done aldehydes and ketones. OK. But let's have a look. So a chain isomer, that means that it has a different chain. So we could talk about, and I'll do some skeletal formula here. I mean, that's, there we go, how many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's hexane. I could change the chain. One, two, three. So I've got five in the chain and I've got one methyl group there. So that is one, two, three, four, five, still six carbons, still the same number of hydrogens. So they both have the molecular formula C6H14. If you don't believe me, draw them out and count them all. But they're both the same. Likewise, I could have it like this. That's also got six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Again, don't believe me, draw it. They will be called chain isomers because I'm changing the chain, but they've got the same molecular formula. Now, in terms of a position isomer, I would be changing the position. So if I draw this one out again, these two would be position isomers. They've got the same chain, but I'm just moving the position of one of the groups. Again, it's quite difficult just to use functional groups that you're aware of. If we're allowed, you know, when, when we progress and we look at all the different functional groups, it's a bit easier to look at these. So, for example, I could look at alcohol. I could have the alcohol group here. I could have the alcohol group at the end. That's a position isomer as well. OK, now functional group isomers more difficult because you need to have more knowledge of your functional group. So, again, I suggest that you look at future videos because I will make it clear when we look at functional group isomers. We will look at some when we do alkanes and alkenes, for example. Um, so just look out for future videos there. So that, that's the end of this introduction to organic. 
Now, it's a difficult topic to revise as a standalone topic because these are just kind of skills that you, you need and you pick up through the organic. So it's quite difficult to learn this as a one off. This is just something that I've been, you know, students have requested this video. So I've kind of followed it through, but it is difficult to teach as a one off topic. I would generally start by you know, introducing those terms and definitions as I've just done there. And then we get on and teach the different functional groups and we embed those phrases and terms in. So, you know, hope it was useful, but make sure that you kind of use future videos as well with the organic.